Hey, what's up? I'm Michael, and today I am going to show you how to protect your pastel artwork. Now, there are several ways you can do this. This is one way if it's a piece that you don't care about too much. Um, this is a crystal clear bag, and um, this was just a, a, a test piece for me, and... I am still going to try to sell this for like you know, 30 bucks at, uh, at the most or something, but it was mainly a test piece and I don't really want to mat it or anything, so I just put a piece of uh, tracing paper over it and put it in the bag. Now, what you really want to do is have glassine that covers the entire thing. I don't have my glassine yet, so unfortunately I can't do that. Uh, I'm going to move things and then come back. So this video might get a little bit longer than it could be, but this is what my fully packaged pastel work is going to look like. Uh, it is mounted onto the piece that of uh, advertisement or branding that comes with the mat and then it's just mat it and I have to custom cut so uh, custom cut the mat so after that I put the piece of tracing paper or in the future glassine over it and I tape uh, extension pieces that I've cut onto the back of the mount now if you want to remount this or something or you want to mount it on something better then you can easily do that but this allows me to store them without them being damaged uh, and then I have an information sticker and a price tag on them and let me actually show you what all I'm going to be using so I have a ruler this is a an architect scale and I highly suggest buying an architect scale and an engineer scale. Uh, they're about three or four dollars a piece, sometimes five dollars a piece. These are invaluable. Uh, they are the most accurate rulers I have ever seen. They absolutely are much, much more accurate than uh, most other rulers. I've got some rulers that they say they're 12 inches and instead of coming all the way to the 12 inch mark they're back here somewhere so uh, a good ruler this is just a school ruler this is actually one made by the Fiskars company and it has this flat edge on it so that's a very important thing for what I'm doing uh, that allows me to use a knife and go right down the edge of it and if I use the lip here on my desk it allows me to put something up there and square it up uh, I have a pad of paper and I'm just going to scratch this out sorry the camera sort of in my way uh, the this is Island Fisherman, so I'm going to write down what it is. Just put I-L-S-F-M and I'll know what it is. And now, let me get to what else I have. A pen for my stickers that I've done. I've already done the stickers, so I'm going to lay those out of the way. And I'm going to put my pen up. I just wanted to show you that's the kind of pen that I used. Those are non-smudge stickers, by the way. I'm using a General's White Charcoal as well. And I've already taken the mat. Uh, I took the, the mat out of its packaging and the branding as well. And I put them in the crystal clear bag. So... I'm going to go on and pull those out, and I'm going to take these and set them out of the way now. So I'm going to be using this mat to put on this. 
Now, I, this is not my best work. I really love the picture. I think it did turn out good. But the sky to me is way too gritty. And it just... I didn't care for the way that the sky turned out. The rest of it I really like. But I still want to mat it. Because there is so much blue in it. I thought, hey, I want to use a blue. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, now, actually, this is white on the back. So I am going to find another pencil instead of this. Let me find where I put them. Okay. I'm just going to use a 2B pencil. And I'll put this back up. Alright, so what I need to do before I do anything else is move everything away from my artwork. And let me move my stuff out of the way so I can do this. Alright. What I need to do is measure I need to know the exact width and the exact dimensions of the artwork itself. So uh, this one is not bad because when I done the artwork, I didn't go all the way to the edge and I had taped it down and that prevented the artwork from curling, the paper from curling. The other one that I'm at, uh, Pastel Sunset, because of the way I done it, it matted or it, it done a little bit weird. So this is 11 and 5 eighths of an inch, which I believe is exactly what I had on the other one. Okay, so I'm going to put an X on here and I'm going to say 11 and 5 eighths. I'm going to come down one though and get the other measurement here in a second uh, now I want to take this and spin it around this way got junk everywhere okay so I want to pull this I'm gonna pull this over here to where I can line it up and I can see that is nine and one eighth, which is the exact same size that uh, my other works on this is. So that what I say nine and one eighth of an inch is the exact same as Pastel Sunset, but this has a quarter inch border on it, so it's going to be much easier for me to mat, I believe. Uh, nine and one eighths. Now that's the overall size. I need to know that so I know that exactly where I can put certain things basically. Uh, now I know that I'm a quarter inch below that so I'm going to measure the artwork now and that is zero to nine Nope, hold on. Zero to eight and eleven sixteenths. Eight and eleven sixteenths, okay. Now I need to do the same thing by turning it. Right, and just align it, and that is eleven and three sixteenths. Okay, so I'm going to grab this and slide it out. Eleven and three sixteenths. Okay, now. What I need to do is take my artwork and move it out of the way completely. I don't need it on the table. Uh, I need it out. So 
I'm taking my bar down and I'm sliding it and I pick it up on the bottom and move it out of the way. Make it where I can grab it easily. And now comes the fun parts. Okay, so I'm going to move all of this stuff out of the way. And now I highly suggest if you're going to cut a mat, you need to buy something like this. I got this one super cheap on sale. Uh, let me. I need my bar back here so that this can actually come over here and rest right here. Now, when I'm ready to cut, I just put my cutter on there. And I highly suggest one of these things, like I said. Uh, now, I will say, when you do this, you need to use acid-free tape. Uh, I'm using just scotch tape because I do not have acid-free. Uh, you might want to use acid-free mats as well, uh, anything like that. What I'm using is because I don't have the money for all that stuff right now. And this is what I can do. So uh, I need to look at this and you need to turn it on its face. So upside down. Alright. Uh, now you can mark this any way you want. But I'm going to do actually. So I'm going to pick this up and move it over out of my way first. Now. I need to have this at the smallest side, eight and three, eight and eleven sixteenths. So, what I need to do is figure out how big this actually is, and this is eight and a half. So I need to go. I need to go over just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to mark this and see if this actually works. So I'm going to say right here and right here and we're going to see if that's 8 and 11 sixteenths. Wait a minute. I think I measured it wrong. Yeah, I measured it really wrong. Okay, never mind that mark then. 8 and 11 sixteenths. So Let's see again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's the mark before uh, 3 fourths. And what I need to do is say, let's see here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to count backwards basically and try to calculate this in my head. So I've got, well, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, 19. So I need to split 19 in half basically. So, um,. going to be nine and a half so I need to find nine over here on this side which was going to be right here and pull it over and now I need to split that right in the center and that should be all right so let me measure this way now. I've got from zero to a half and then plus one and plus one and a half. So I've got zero, I've got my half and it's actually a little bit off. So 
I think that needs to come back over just a little bit that way. Let me test it one more time. I think if it's right there, it'll work. Okay, so just to show one more time, I am at nine and a half on either side. And that's nine and a half sixteenths on either side. So I'm going to come back here. Mark it there. Then I'm going to come over here and mark it over here. Now, what I would suggest doing this with is a self-centering ruler. Um, they are very neat uh, tools. I greatly enjoy self-centering rulers. I, I would greatly enjoy a self-centering ruler, I should say. So now I have these and all I have to do, just eyeball it and make sure that it, it looks straight. And it's going to be a good thing I'm doing this because whoever cut this on this side had a dull blade and they curved it. And that looks right and then on this side that's going to be about where my art that's going to be the opening for my artwork so now on the other side it needs to be 11 and 3 16 so I'm going to do the same exact thing find the difference there's got to be an easier way to do this. If you know how to to figure out how to mat and everything easier, then go for it. Uh, I'm just showing you my method because I this is only my third time matting anything. But this is a way that I can protect my artwork. So, 11 and 3 sixteenths. Let's see, this is 9 and a half. So... I need to add one and a half inches plus three sixteenths. So one and a half inches. Let's see here. Okay. I'm going to say actually about right. Should be about right here. And if I measured right in my head, then this will work right. If not, I'll have to remeasure it. So, what I'm going to do is look over here. This is zero and that is to 11 and 3 sixteenths. Now I have thirteen sixteenths of an inch and thirteen sixteenths of an inch. So now I am just going to set this up for 13 sixteenths on either side. You can actually use calculators for this. Uh, I have one on my phone and it does tell me exactly how many I have to have and all of that. Uh, but I want to show how you could do this by hand. So now I've got that. I'm going to pull this back over. All right. Now I'm going to take my book because it's about the right height. And 
and first thing I'm going to do is find the proper place for just one side. Let's see. Alright. I'm going to start with the long sides. Now, what I want to do is take this and try to align those dots try to align them with this groove uh, so let me get that I'm going to push this back down and then I'm going to slow I'm going to hold this up just a little bit and slowly tap this over into place now I'm holding this with this part and then I'm pushing it with my fingers I need to loosen it up a little bit more I think All right. Now that I'm I'm about where I I need to make sure my slip mat's right. I need to get this in there right and push it back out just a tad bit. I'm going to lock this down and now I'm going to just draw across the entire back of it and I'm going to turn this around this way put it in here and I want to draw across the entire back again I need to make sure this was not cut right originally apparently and I need to make sure that my measurements are on so I, I'm going to just do that right quick. This line needs to be the same as this line over here so that is one and three sixteenths of an inch and one and three sixteenths of an inch. All right, so this is right. It's just the way I used it to put it in there. It was not right. So uh, because if you look at this, this is actually warped, and it's not going to be warped once I get done with it, though. So now I'm going to take this and move it this way, and you do not have to you don't have to uh, to do this entire thing first but I find it very I find it a lot easier to actually mark it all out first and then go back and put in where I need to draw or move this to where I need to draw and then go back and cut it uh, although I am having to move it twice so let's see here That looks like that's going to be about right. Oh, got to pull it back just a little more. All right, let me tighten it down. If if it's off a little bit, what I'll do is go back in and draw another line on it, readjust it, draw a line on it. Uh, Fortunately, I have my pencil way down here, so let me do this and then I will measure it and check it. So on this end, it is 1 and 7 sixteenths basically, and then on this end, it is... one and seven sixteenths. 
So this is making it a lot more accurate than what I actually had it, which is a very good thing. I need it to be that accurate. Uh, and I can look at this now and tell that that is kind of cut off. I didn't realize that was so warped when I bought it. Uh, now you can do this also without, um, without any type or without buying one that's already been cut. I just simply bought these because they were cheaper to buy this way. I didn't have the money to do the whole big board at one time. Uh, and I had, I sort of stopped piled them until I figured out how to do this. So let me get that in there. Let me draw it across. And now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go and start with the ends. I'm going to make sure it's locked down really good. This blade is a locking blade. Once you put it in, it's going to lock itself in and you push it. So, it locks right on top and I put it it's got a guide over here so what you want to do is make sure that you have that there really tight uh, you want it to be perfectly tight put pressure when you get first you get it here put pressure with your hand here and hold this and then lock it now come up here hold this put pressure and and you keep going until that guide hits that part and just so you can see it did cut it Do the same thing again. Okay, now I have to adjust it to these. And now that I have the lines, that's easy to do. I simply do that and I can hold this up just a little and slide that and I can see that that's almost there let's see it's easier to push it out Get it tight and then push it back in just a little bit with the the slip mat. Oops. Let's see here. That looks good. I'm gonna lock it. Okay, again hold this. Put it in, put pressure, okay, Sorry about that. I had to mute my phone in case it works. Uh, my phone is not working correctly right now, so I'm hoping it doesn't ring while I'm in a video. I had forgot about it. So, all right. Again, I've got it in place. I'm I'm actually going to hold it here, lock it that way. I think that's the easier way to do it. And now, there we go. All right, now this should just basically pop right out. If it doesn't, uh, let's 
see. For some reason it didn't go all the way across there. Just going to put it back. Put this back on here. Lock it in. And just cut right across again. There we go. Now, there we go. My mat is finished. Now, I can take this and I can put this to the side and I'll have to worry about it. And give me one second and I'll get the rest of the stuff. basically need everything back up here to do my actual matting and mounting up. What I'm going to do now though, to, I'm done with this, so I'm going to go on, loosen that, and push this over to where it is at least even. And... Now I'm just going to remove this. Okay. I don't need this. Or that. Or even this now. Okay. Uh, what I need now is my board I'm going to mount it to. And the part that I mount to I put on this side because it I think it's easier to put it over here tape it down to this now what I'm going to do is have this you can see I have this lip up so I'm going to use this to square it all up make sure that it's right alright so now I'm going to come back and I have just my pencil here and I'm actually going to use that white charcoal for this. I am simply going to put, you won't see it here, but I'm going to put corners so I know where this actually needs to fall. Now, here comes the fun part, uh, a test fit. Okay. So what that's allowing me to do is I can pick this up and move it to where I want it. And that allows me to actually move the artwork to where it needs to be. So let me do that again. Push it up a little bit. If I'm going to lose part of the side, I'd rather lose the right. And there we go. Now, I'm going to straighten this up. I think this might need to go up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is hold it and then pick that up just a little bit. Now I'm going to take this pencil. And just barely tap it right there. Okay. Now I didn't do that right, so I've got to move that. 
All right, I think that that's going to be about right. So that's how it will look when it's matted. I can take this and flip it and see if it looks a little better that way instead. Uh, it does not. I need to put it back the other way. Okay, so now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is a, just to make sure, you know, I was doing this just to make sure that I cut it right, and I did. So what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to actually move the artwork a little bit. I need to get some tape. Now, as I said, use mounting tape, acid-free mounting tape. Um, I'm still going to use what I have at the moment, uh, but you will see what I do. So, I'm simply going to stick this down to my desk. I want to pull off two pieces. And this is the only way I know of doing this right now. So if I figure out a better way to do this, I will definitely do it. Um, but I'm going to take this and I'm just going to lift these up. Lift this up a little bit off the edge of this. Now I'm overhanging overhanging the edge slightly you can't see it on camera but let me see here I am going to simply put the tape up under there and push down on the edge and then take my finger off all right you need to actually make sure that your tape is long enough that it can be taped down so that piece is actually not quite the size that I need. Uh, I'll make do with it though. Okay, again. Now, pull this back up. You, I can't uh, express how important it is to have some sort of straight edge to be able to to uh, square up your work with. So it looks like that doesn't want to go down there. I'm going to have to pick it up and sort of smooth it out. This is why you want to have borders on your your work. Now this is I just need to make sure that I have it up enough that the the mat will go over it and I think this is the way I had it let's see I think that's the right way so I'm going to start at the right edge Once I get it about where I want it, I'll slightly drop it and then I see that's about right. So now I'm going to press down and smooth this out. And now that is there. And Now what you can do also is you can take this and put it down and get it perfect and all of that and then you can take your tape and you can put you two pieces and then put some pieces across this way and mount it that way. Um, but I have found that this is the only way I can get my artwork matted properly. So now I have this here. What I'm going to do is take 
this and just stick it over it for a minute. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to put this like this. Okay. Now, put my other little straight edge up here. And now, I am going to simply take these like so. Okay. So now, all I have to do Take the straight edge again and make sure that they're aligned and then press down on this again. Alright, now if you want to, you don't have to, but if you absolutely want to, you can put a piece of tape, roll it up under here and stick it down. I wouldn't do that though unless it's just for some reason this won't work. So that is... Mat it. You can actually take that and put it in a frame now if you want to. And what I'm going to do here is find out where this actually goes. Let's see. Okay. This goes right here. Like so. And I'm going to... I cut out these pieces of paper. Let me show you the dimensions on them they are one and a fourth inches wide and about they're about two and three sixteenths inches long you can make them just two inches long and they'll be fine uh, what I would do though is take them and fold them in half fold one in half and then stick it on the end and see where it comes to and if that looks about the right place if that will fit then that's what you want to do so that's going to work for me I'm going to just fold this one in half let me move my artwork out the way slide this move the artwork up here Okay, now, I'm just going to flatten that back out and stick it right there beside of it. It's a little bit challenging to do that sometimes. Now, again, this is tracing paper. You should use glassine if you have that instead. For us poor starving artists, uh, this is going to be the better option at the, not the better option but the the starting option uh, you I believe I've heard you can use something called butcher paper as well but I don't even know what butcher paper is so uh, I've seen it but I'm not sure if it is if it was correct information that you can use it okay so I don't want to press this down onto my desk so you just be very careful with what you do. Okay. So pull the artwork back over here. I'm going to pull it up to about where it needs to go. And 
simply I want to remove my pencil lip and I'm going to fold this and then get that one on there and then same thing with this just sort of get it in place you need to make sure that it's it's not in the not actually touching the artwork okay, that works Alright, now I'm just going to take this and make sure I have it on there good now. Just so you see how it is, it's just to the back of the mount so that it's not actually touching this. And now, that is done. That's ready to go. That will protect my artwork. It's mounted and matted. Now, you can also buy an actual mounting board, and if you're going to be more professional about it, that's what you should do. From here, you want to find, you want to get your crystal clear bag, is what these are called. You want your flap to be on the front. So, you want this part to be up top, where the flap is. So, you have to get it fed in there a little bit. Uh, it can be hard to do. Oops. Be careful with it when you put it in there though. Uh, now, once that's there, go on and fold your top down. Alright, then there's a thing on the back. Just grab that. Pull it off right quick. Then you just fold this back over. All right, it is safe to take this, press it down, draw that out. These bags, these crystal clear bags, they are excellent for uh, to where you can reopen them. You can store your artwork in them like this. <coughs> now. I have my price tag I'm just going to put that right there if you have packaging branding uh, you know put it in the corner or something maybe put a business card on the other corner or something and I'm going to just put Put me a label right here. You just want to put them over top of the mat and not the artwork. So that's all there is to it. Uh, sorry it took me 50 minutes to do, but there you go. And if you if you want to, at this point, you can take all of your uh, stuff and. simply stack them like this uh, I believe they're probably be safe to stack about five high uh, you can take them like so and put a people have told me a skirt hanger 
right here on the top and then you can hang that in your closet if you want to and that's probably what I'm going to be doing with mine is storing them to where they're vertical like that so there you go that's how you can protect your pastel works and package them to sell um, now I can actually go through and create many many more pastels I'm very happy with this uh, you don't have to buy the pre-cut ones the pre-cut mats like I did you can buy the mat and the mount board separately and just do that if you want to uh, that is a cheaper option if you have enough to buy all of it at once you'll get more out of it so there we go and I will see you later